We'll be looking at a truck shipment example illustrating a one-time shipment, which is an operational decision where we know the quantity and we want to determine whether we should ship it as truckload or less than truckload. In this example, we'll be shipping product from Raleigh, North Carolina to Gainesville, Florida. The total distance of the shipment is 532 miles. So starting off, we're going to be looking at freight transport problems and dealing with multiple shipments. In this example, we'll be dealing initially just with a single shipment, but then later on we'll be doing uh, examples where we have multiple shipments. So for each shipment, we're going to be creating a structure, and then multiple shipments will be an array of structures, and that'll be a convenient way of aggregating together all of the elements that characterize the individual individual shipments. So for this example, and we're going to, as a default, you usually use SH to represent a shipment structure. And the first field we're going to define, and this is uh, in terms of the example, in answer to the first question, that a product is going to be shipped point to point truckload, then the first question is to determine what is the maximum payload that can be shipped of this particular product. So in terms of the shipment structure, we're going to first define the distance of the shipment. And this isn't actually required to determine the maximum payload that is independent of the distance, but we'll be needing that for subsequent. So I'm going to do that and you'll see that actually it has created the shipment structure just with that one field. And then next we know that for each unit, the weight is 40 pounds and the cubic volume is nine cubic feet. The uh, ratio of those two allow us to determine the density for this product and we've assigned that density to the field S. So now we know the density is 4.44. And we're going to do a similar thing for the trucking information. Here we're going to define a structure called TR for the truck. And then the weight and cube capacities are each going to be uh, two different fields of the truck structure. And then to determine the maximum payload, we can the actual calculation looking at the formula is to take the minimum of the weight capacity or to convert the density into the equivalent uh, weight capacity subject to the constraint that the trailer itself can only occupy, in this case, 2,750 cubic feet. So when we do that for this, we get a Q max of 6.11 tons. Within MATLOG, there's a function that does the same calculation. And the two inputs of it are first the shipment and then the trucking structures. So with that, we get that same calculation. Then for question number two, we're talking about a specific demand for 350 units of the product that are going to be shipped. And for that, we want to determine what's the number of truckloads required. So for this, we can define a unit demand of 350 and then multiply that times the weight, which would give us a result in pounds. And then dividing that by 2000 converts Q, our shipment size, that now becomes a known value. And that value would be in tons. And then we can take uh, that number divided by the maximum payload and then round it up using the ceiling function. So that's telling us then the answer for question number two is that we, we require two truckloads. For question number three, I'm going to get the current producer price index value for truckload. The link to where that is uh, in terms of the website is on the course page. And the value that is most recent is a provisional value for January of 2018. And the value is 131.4. I can then determine the transport rate in terms of dollars per mile by taking the current PPI for truckload, dividing that by the PPI for the year 2004, which was the year in which it was determined that for that year, the cost was $2 per mile. And then we can use this ratio to adjust to reflect current cost. So when we do that, we've added then a third field, R, with a value of 2.55.
and then we can use that to calculate the charge for truckload which is uh, $2,700. We can do that by multiplying the number of truckloads times the rate times the distance or we can do it using a function that's within MATLAB called transcharge and there we provide first the quantity that we'll be shipping and then the shipment and truck structures and with that transcharge determines the same value. For question number four we want to estimate the charge for less than truckload using the estimation formula. So uh, what we're going to be doing is instead of taking the entire seven tons which is not feasible for LTL we're going to use just the fractional difference between the seven tons and the max payload of 6.11 tons and that amount first the quantity that we're going to be shipping truckload is going to be 6.11 so that's one truckload and then the fractional component is seven tons minus that 6.11 which corresponds to 0 0.8889 tons. And then for LTL, we can do just like for truckload and use the most recent PPI value for LTL. And as of January 18, that value was 179.4. And then for that value, instead of in MATLAB implementing that estimation formula, I'm not gonna even do that. I'm gonna directly use uh, some of the MATLOG functions and one of them is the trans charge that will directly calculate the corresponding LTL transport charge using the most recent or whatever PPI value for LTL. And the way it's done is unlike for truckload where we have three input arguments, we can use the same function trans charge and get a, a charge just for LTL. And we can get that by providing a fourth input argument, which is the PPI for LTL and then leaving blank the third input argument which would have been the truck structure so that's telling the function to just calculate the LTL charge we do that we get a little over fifteen hundred dollars as the charge for that fractional component and if we wanted to directly calculate it within MATLOG there is a function called rate LTL and what that does is actually uh, determine the uh, estimation formula so it's actually a function that embeds that esti estimation formula it has four input arguments the size of the shipment in tons density distance and then the ppi value for that we get a rate and this value of 318 is in dollars per ton mile so to translate that into the actual charge for ltl we need to take that value uh, times the distance times the quantity so the tons and the mile cancel out and we're left with dollars which represents what the charge would be for question number five what is the change in total charge well for the combined uh, LTL and truckload charge the total is 2866 And the difference between that is that it's actually cheaper to use the two trailer loads. If we actually do the fractional LTL, we'll actually have an increase in cost. And the reason for that is that LTL is very expensive even for quantities that are less than one ton. The reason being is all of the handling involved, which can be very expensive. For question number six, here the question is what would the fractional portion have to be so that the cost would net out to be the same and we can do that by solving for the point using the f min search function we want to solve for the point such that the absolute value of the difference between the charge uh, for truckload and for ltl approaches zero so by minimizing the absolute value of this difference if the difference is positive or negative taking the absolute value is going to force that difference down to zero so this is a way of having f min search uh, find the intersection point of both of those curves and before doing that we define function handles one for the truckload charge 
and then another for the less than truckload charge, the LTL charge, and then use the difference of those function handles as an argument to F min search. And here I'm making this absolute value into its own function handle and making it a variable as a, a variable with respect to the shipment size. And I'm picking as my starting point the quantity that I plan to ship for LTL. So running this entire thing, I end up with 0.7882, and that would be the point at which the uh, fractional portion would make sense to actually ship it. It would actually equal the cost of shipping as two truckloads, and then anything less than this value would be better to actually ship as LTL. Having said that, if the costs are about the same in both circumstances, I would definitely prefer to have two trailer loads used as opposed to taking a fraction of the load and shipping it on LTL. One is that it typically takes longer to ship something to LTL, and also there's more likelihood of the uh, item being damaged. And even though you do carry insurance when you ship something LTL, you really only get reimbursement if you have very significant damage. So any time you have the option where the costs are roughly the same, I would really go with the uh, using the two truckloads. And it's only when it's a very significant saving that I think I would actually switch to uh, actually shipping something as LTL. Uh, minimum charges. For both of the minimum charge calculations, I'm using a matlock function called min charge. So e each of these functions using the current PPI values, give me the minimum charges. And then with those values, I can then plot the independent shipment charge, first by creating a function handle using trans charge. And then the only variable is the shipment quantity, shipment structure, the truck structure, and the PPI are all static. So with that defined, I can use fplot, which is a function in MATLAB that allows me to plot a function handle over this range. So when I do that, it plots this function handle together with labels on the x and y axes. I can also plot the intersection point between LTL and truckload. And I can also plot this point, which corresponds to the maximum payload point where I switch from one to two truckloads to get the value at zero. I get a value of uh, a total cost of one. And then if I look at one pound, which is one over 2000, I get 8849, which corresponds to uh, the minimum charge for LTL. Uh, this is an example of a kind of problem where if I'm exactly at zero, I have a cost of zero. And as soon as I move even one pound, which is a very small number, one over 2000, I jump from zero up to 88.49. In terms of an optimization, if I'm located right at a point, so the distance is zero, I would like to have my cost also be zero. So when I have a minimum charge, I have to be uh, aware of what happens as I approach zero, where in this case, when I'm even shipping one pound, I'm incurring the minimum charge. But then as I switch to zero, it then results in a charge of zero. For question number eight, the uh, here basically you can go to the course website and there's a link to the FedEx site for LTL quotes. And the only thing I think is notable here is that we want to be able to take our fractional LTL quantity that we're going to be shipping, which is 0.8889 tons. And on the website, it asks for the weight for LTL shipments in pounds. So all I'm doing here is I'm multiplying that times 2,000 and rounding it. So I get a value of 1778. For question number nine, we're going to be using the czar light uh, tariff to estimate what the LTL charge would be. So for this problem, I'm going to do the calculation in MATLAB, which corresponds to the uh, information that's on the slide 
uh, in response to this question just to show you how you could do something like this in MATLAB. First, I'm going to uh, use as my quantity my LTL uh, portion in tons. The class of the shipment is a class 200. That's the class closest to the 4.44 uh, pounds per cubic foot density. This example has zero discount. In practice, you typically get some type of discount off of the uh, actual tariff charge. And then there's a minimum charge of 95.23 and that minimum charge is actually specified in the title uh, for each tariff so if you look in the on the slide or in the notes for the entire tariff sheet you'll see that the minimum charge is embedded into the title of that so i've defined these quantities and then for the different to define the different rate breaks i want to include what is the quantity in tons at which we switch from one to another so I'm going to define a vector of those quantities corresponding to the bottom row of that table. And I'm going to include a zero in addition to the first value of 0 0.25, which in tons is equal to 500 pounds. Here I have infinity at the end. And by putting that extra zero in, I can then determine the index corresponding to what rate break I want to determine my value in with basically using the find command and then using either the portion from one to one less than the end of that range of rate break quantities. And here I have a less than or equal to Q. And then this is the uh, bitwise and operation that is anding each value of the corresponding vectors. And then the other value is a strict less than the values going from starting at two to the end of that vector. So with that, I can determine that the correct I value is equal to actually the third column. And then looking into the tariff, I could see for that third column in the row corresponding to class 200, the value is 99.92, and that's dollars per hundred weight. So to convert that into the actual charge, I can take my quantity in tons times 20 to convert that to hundred weights multiply it times that rate to get a total charge of 1776 and that's the value for the actual rate break to consider the next highest rate break the value in the tariff for that is $81.89 per hundred weight which is a lesser value so it may make sense to actually pay the higher value and then the quantity that I would be paying for instead of the 0.8889 tons I have to go up to what is the weight for the next highest rate break and looking at the table you can see that that value is equal to one and I can get that from this vector here by just adding one to my index i the reason I'm adding one is because I added an extra zero so I need instead of being the third element it's actually the fourth element but it does correspond to the third column in the table so with that value I can look at what would be the charge for the next highest and that value is uh, 1638 which is less than the original value so when I determine my final overall charge I want to take the minimum of both of those two values and compare that to the minimum charge and take the maximum of either of those and then apply one minus whatever discount factor and from all of that I get my estimate of what my tariff charge would be which again is uh, a value in some sense this is really just a nominal value because any type of LTL shipper you typically uh, agree to use the tariff and then all of the negotiation is to determine what is the appropriate discount from that tariff so it's really like a you know MSRP value on a car new car purchase it's just a starting point for negotiation and then you know nobody really pays that you pay some discount from that value so that's something so using the czar light would be uh, something you would do if you're going to be doing frequent LTL shipments using the same carrier you would agree to a discount and then apply the tariff if you're just going to be shipping something LTL one time then you could use the FedEx spot quote to just get a quote for a single shipment as you can expect the more frequently you do something you can probably get a lesser cost 
So when you go to the FedEx LTL site for a one-time spot quote, that's probably going to be a higher value than you can negotiate if you're going to be doing something on a regular basis. The reason that you can do that negotiation is that there are real actual cost savings to the LTL carrier if you're going to be doing frequent shipments. If you have, for example, daily pickups of product that's going to be shipped LTL, then it's more efficient for the LTL carrier because they can schedule daily pickups as opposed to a one-time spot pickup. It basically disrupts their normal schedule and it's probably going to be actually more costly to the shipper. The last question for the one-time shipment example is question number 10. Uh, first thing is, what is the implied discount of the estimated charge as compared to the undiscounted tariff? In terms of the applied discount, it corresponds to about an 8% discount. And then secondly, what would be the weight break between the rate breaks such that uh, we would be indifferent between the two? In our example, we actually use the portion within the weight break, weight with a W, as opposed to rate break, which is the entire range. And for that, we could calculate a value of 0.8196 as opposed to 0.8889. So since we are above this value of 8196, we are in the range of the weight break. It values below 8196 are in the regular rate break. And the range would go, in terms of this table, everywhere from 0.5 up to 1 ton. So from 0.5 up to 0.8196, we would be using the regular rate. And then for values greater than that, it's actually better to pay the rate for the one ton at the lower dollar per hundred weight rate. And the calculation includes both of those factors.